Hello, my name is Chris Hammond. I'm the director of training here with .NET New Corporation. In this video, I'm going to follow up on a blog post I wrote earlier this week on changing the copyright statements within .NET Nuke. You know, being that it's January 2011, most of your copyright statements are probably out of date. But within .NET Nuke, it's actually easy to change the copyright statement. There's a couple different approaches on how to do how to do that. So what we're going to do is first we're going to go to our .NET Nuke website. We're going to go to the site settings. We'll take a look at that copyright setting. So here we have a, a fairly clean .NET Nuke 5.6.0 professional installation. If we go to the admin site settings page, now you can do this as either an administrator or a super user account. And you can find one of the first options here on the page is a copyright statement. Well, we could simply come in here and change that copyright statement. And if we scroll to the bottom of the page and click on update, that would update the site settings. Now if your skin is using the .NET Nuke copyright, which is a skin object that can be included within a skin, you can see it's now been updated down below. Now in addition to just changing that setting, which we could come in and change next year to 2012, we can actually remove that, the value from that setting and .NET Nuke will dynamically build a copyright statement for us. So if I clear out the copyright setting and I click on update, and we scroll back to the bottom of the page, now you can see that the copyright statement reads copyright C in parens 2001 and then the name of our portal. And you can see the title of our portal up here, .NET Nuke Demo.com. So we've gone through and now in 2012, .NET Nuke would change that to 2012. There's been a few comments on the blog about how you can change the way this particular text displays. You can see it's just C in parens. Now if you want to use the copyright symbol, it's actually very easy to modify and control within .NET Nuke. This text down here is provided through a language file in DNN. Well, as an administrator or a super user in .NET Nuke, you can go to the Admin Languages page. The Languages page is going to provide you some basic information about the languages available on your site. Now, we're not going into details on how to add additional languages, but what we do have the ability to do is come over here to the Static Resources section for the current language. We can come in and we can change the text that's used on our website. There's a couple different options here, system, host, and site. Well, if you're logged in as an admin, you're only going to have site as an option. But because we're logged in as a super user, we have both system and host. Well, when we go in and we change text within, a, within the .NET Nuke language editor, depending on which level we change it at, that text will be applied at different levels within .NET Nuke. System physically changes the language resource files made available within this particular .NET Nuke website. Now, if we update or upgrade to the next version of .NET Nuke, those system resource files are likely to get overwritten. If we modify at the host level, what actually occurs is when you make a change to a language file, .NET Nuke creates a new version of that language file with a .host in the file name. And the change you made goes into that new host file. So .NET Nuke, when it loads up language resources, looks for system files and then host files. Anything that's defined in host overrides system. We can take that one step further and define very specific language text at the site level. So if we change it at the site level, it will create a language resource file with portal and then the ID of our portal in the name of the file. And it would be loaded after host and after system. So similar to the way cascading style sheets work, the last thing loaded has the higher precedence. Well, we're simply just going to make a site-specific change at this point. Now, site means it's only going to apply to this portal. So I'm going to click on the pencil there underneath site. Now what we need to do is we need to find where that copyright statement is in the language editor. Well, I know from previous experience that the copyright skin object is found under local resources, under admin, under skins, and then under this app local resources folder. And what we see in here are all of the skin objects or a number of the skin objects that come with .NET Nuke. And you can see there's a copyright.ascx file. If we go ahead and click on that, on the right side of this language editor page, we now get the information for that ascx file. Well, there's one thing that we can change in there. You can see the default copyright text value is copyright, C in parens, and then curly brace 0, curly brace 1. Well, the 0 gets replaced with the current year. 1 gets replaced with the portal name. 
So if we wanted to change the C into the copyright symbol, we can use the ampersand copy semicolon sign. And if we click save resource file, what's actually going to occur here is .NET Nuke creates a new file called copyright.ascx.portal-1.resx with that new copyright value. If we scroll down to the bottom of the page, we would actually need to reload the page in order to see the change occur. So if I go back, let's say, for example, to the site settings. So you can see if you go to the site settings page and you scroll down to the bottom now, you can see it shows copyright, the copyright symbol, current year, and again, the title of the portal. Now, if you want to customize the copyright even further, you can go into the admin languages page again. We're going to click on site again. We're going to navigate down to the local resources, admin, skins, and then app local resources folder. Now, you'll notice that there are two copyright.ascx references. Our original one and then portal-1. Now we want to click on the original one. You can see that it does load the changes that we made and in this case if we want to add the current or a previous year in front of the current year we can go ahead and type that in here and click save resource file. Now it will update that other statement copyright.ascx.portal-1. Now we need to navigate back to the home page again to in order to see those changes occur or take place and on the home page here if you scroll down to the bottom you can see it currently shows copyright the copyright symbol 2002 through the current year and then the title of our portal so you can see it's very easy to go in and customize the copyright statement within dotnet nuke without actually having to make any changes to your skin and using the language editor within dnn so if you're interested in more .NET Nuke training information, please check out our training page under the resources tab on .NET Nuke.com. You can find a variety of free videos there as well as a schedule of our upcoming instructor-led training and information about our custom on-site and online training options. Again, this is Chris Hammond with .NET Nuke. Thanks for watching the video.